are listening to The J-Boy Show, your number one source for Auburn and the SEC. My goal was to run through his soul and grab his heart when I, when I run through his soul. Through his soul. Kurt, Nate, Coach Dad. Those are memories. memories. I think we've established ourselves as, I think, the premier conference in college football. College football. Now, the SEC is, is, is better at the top. It's better in the middle. It's- the Southeastern Conference remains the premier conference. Yeah. Yeah. Makes the snap. In the SEC and everybody else trying to catch it. I think this is probably the best league from a competitive venue standpoint. They have the most capable team. You just look at those programs, the way they recruit, how they invest. Snap to Burrow. Three steps. Fires. Back corner of the end zone. Over the shoulder. Catch. Did he hold on? He did. Justin Jefferson. Touchdown. Now, your host, J-Boy. All right, everybody, and welcome to another edition, the Friday edition of the J-Boy Show, your favorite new SEC podcast. Uh, And we are joined today by one of the top prospects in the country. Uh, He's a huge Auburn target. He's a huge SEC target. He's a huge national target. And that's four-star wide receiver Malcolm Johnson Jr. Uh, They call him Rocket, the Jet, whatever goes fast. Malcolm, what's up, man? Nothing much, man. Just just trying to stay safe out here and, and stay positive, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I know it's it's got to be, and, and I want I do want to ask you about that because again, you know, you, you're you're going into a senior year. I mean, you're you're a senior. You've been through off seasons uh-huh. doing stuff like that. How much different has this one been, just because of the virus? Um, it's been different because of the um the different location that I have to go to just and stuff like that but yeah. other than that i've been really working out like i would normally work out mm-hmm. um to be honest so Good. it's been so different it's, but not yeah. that much different. yeah so it really hasn't hasn't messed with your routine that much which which you know as well as i do especially you, you guys that are high profile guys you typically have a routine is that something that mm-hmm. you just you've always had or did you have to learn that as you got older uh, kind of go there with it for me uh so at first, it was a little different because I, I didn't have a routine. But, but pretty much, I've been having a routine since I was a kid. Yeah. I would always play sports, and I would and I would have different practices, different days. So, I, I've always been in a routine system. And yeah. without that, it's kind of weird. Definitely, definitely, and it, it makes things harder. And you always hear coaches talk about the process, and and that's what they're talking about now. Malcolm, again, man, you know. Uh, as I've talked to you about, you know, I coached college football for nine years. And the one thing that jumps off to me about you, uh, obviously you can play on the football field, but the way that coaches talk about you off the field, your maturity, you know, your leadership, uh, can you kind of talk about what it's, well, what is expected of you when you're as high profile of a prospect as you are on and off the field? Everybody's always looking at you. Um, yeah. And people are always looking up to you. Yeah. So I feel like you have to, lead them by example because I think about my my nieces and nephews Mm -hmm. and and my cousins and stuff like that and 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 I just I just want them to see me as a as a good person on and off the field and I don't want anyone else to to think I'm something that I'm not so I just be myself and and that's just who I am exactly and you can tell too obviously on the field you're being yourself you know you can tell you're having fun you know you're unbelievably fast and I just want to ask you Malcolm, as a guy that that doesn't run four four, never ran a four four, dude, what's it like being able to run that fast? Do you feel like it kind of like you're a superhero sometimes? <laughs> uh, honestly, is it's kind of a lot of work um, because you're running at, at such a um, high pace mm-hmm. um, that everyone knows. You, you kind of take more injuries, and you kind of have to go above and beyond the the maintenance your body yeah it's, it's like a, a lamborghini and a nissan yeah Hi, that's, a to, that's a great comp that's a great comp i to, like that yeah you gotta have to take care of the lambo a lot more yeah, that's exactly right that's exactly you're, you're definitely a lambo man and, and speaking of that you know obviously you're getting calls from all over the country i mean you have offers from auburn alabama georgia florida if there was a football team on mars they'd have offered you too 
<laughs> really kind of kind of where are you right now is there uh, again is there you know three or four or five schools or maybe one or two schools that's kind of you know maybe sticking out for you or maybe they're all even uh i would say um it's a few schools that been that has really been um on me a lot more than other schools i would say um um auburn alabama mm-hmm. Florida, LSU, and Georgia. Yeah, well, those are the big dogs in the league. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's it. Is are you are you? And again, you know, you can you can tell us what you can tell us. I don't want you to pigeonhole yourself, but yeah. you know, are you looking to go SEC? I mean, is that obviously that's a lot of people's goals. I mean, is that something that's mm-hmm. really in your mind? Uh, it's in my mind, but it's not like I have to have it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so distance isn't a huge deal for you. You're you can go anywhere and be fine. Yeah, it's not a yeah, it's not a make or break thing. For definitely, me. definitely. Now, when you're when you're Malcolm, again, like I said, man, I, I I've been on both sides of it. You're you're on one side of it right now, and if you ever get into coaching, it's going to blow your mind when you're on the other side of it. But you know, <laughs> when you're getting recruited and these guys are coming to see you and they're coming to talk to you, and again, we're not talking about specifics. But I've always said yeah. this. I feel like that, you know, high school guys, especially the older ones, they can tell when somebody's being fake. Have you had an instance yeah. of a coach come in and just you're like, man, this dude's fake as hell. Like, I can't uh, I can't I don't I don't respect this. Uh, I think I've had quite a few incidents really? like that. Yeah. I... But I but I instead of just saying that blatantly, you kind of have to outsmart them. Yeah. And 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 their pitch to you and. And just work around it instead of doing stuff that that you might want to do, but yeah, you have exactly. to be mature and, and and not do that, and just and just tell them, um, I don't think this is the best fit for me. Yeah, or and again, stuff it's, like it's, that. So yeah, and you never want to burn a bridge. You're exactly right. Uh, that's a mature way to handle it. And, and again, I knew you would, man. You're a mature guy. That's that's why the bag's going to be yours, man. But um, you know, when you're looking at these schools, obviously the offensive system is going to be a big deal. Is uh-huh. is there one factor, whether it's the offensive system, obviously distance isn't a problem, in your recruitment that you're like, okay, this is my main thing, whether it be academics or whatever, and everything else is kind of under that, or is there a couple things that really stand at the top in, in when you're making your decision? Um, I would say uh, definitely academics because Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to get into business. Okay. And I definitely want to be in a um a, a good business program. Um, other than that, I would say that the team itself has to um all be on one accord. Yeah. And that's all of them wanting to the the be better. Exactly. And and you can kind of see their their mindset and how the coaching is and stuff like that. That that's really important to me. Yeah. Um, as far as the decision, I would say, um, and and the offense too. It has to be a receiver friendly offense. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that that's a big thing too. Um, I just don't want to go into a system where they don't know how to use speed. Some offenses don't know how to use speed because exactly. they, they really never had it. So that's that's important to me too. Yeah. Now now when you look at and, and I'm going to give you some examples, but obviously mm-hmm. we'll start with Auburn. When you look at Auburn's offense. You know, obviously they brought in Chad Morris from Arkansas, a guy that was at Clemson that knows the spread game, you know, very well, can do some things that really flow within Coach Malzahn's offense. And you look at a guy like an Anthony Schwartz. You know, you look at some of the guys that Auburn's had in the past. You know, do you see if you – hypothetical, if you were to go to Auburn, you have Bo Nix, a guy back there that you know can throw the ball around. You know they're going to let him sling it around a little bit. Is, Is that something, you know, is the quarterback a huge deal too for you, Malcolm? Uh, definitely. I think the quarterback is, because that's the person that that's going to have to give you, get you the ball. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that relationship is important too. And, um, as soon as I found out what school I'm going to, I'm going to build that immediately. Exactly. So that is important. Have you had, have you had quarterbacks at schools? And again, you don't have to be specific, reach out to you. Like, listen, Malcolm, I'm just telling you, bro, just go deep and I'm going to throw it as far as I can. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had I had a few quarterbacks do that. Yeah, like we we always have a competition to see if they can like out throw me. <laughs> I mean, outrun me with the ball. That's <laughs> so, I bet yeah, they never win. A lot of fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet they never win. But, uh, but Malcolm, you know, I, I don't want to keep you too long, man, but you know, it's, uh, I feel like, you know, again, you're a mature guy and, and you can go in depth and really explain to our audience. Just, can you talk about, you know, Grant, I asked Philip O'Brien this, who's committed to Auburn. Can you talk about growing up and you, you know, you think you're going to be good, you know, you're confident. That's just who you are. And then all of a sudden you're sitting here right now as a four-star wide receiver you have offers from the top places in the country, some of the top academic institutions in the country. Have you taken a day, and I know you're a humble guy, have you taken a day and just looked back and said, you know what, I'm doing it? I, I honestly haven't. Um, Good for you. Good for I, you. This is, really, this is really a dream come true, to be honest. Like, I take like little moments, like probably like five minutes or something like that, but not really a whole day to just look back like sit up on my bed and think about it. Yeah. Because um when I was younger, I was I wasn't that good. But really? um, I always really? would work. Yeah. Were you a chubby kid? Were fast. you a chubby kid growing up? I wasn't chubby. I was just super small. Okay. Like okay. extremely small. smaller than everyone else because I played unlimited and um the teams we would play were were large. Like they 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 were so super big to me. It was like six three dudes, and like <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> like you're playing against your dad. Exactly. Now, did, and, did that help you though? And, did that help you though? Like uh, just having to to be elusive with the ball in your hands against bigger guys, younger. I think that did help me because since I played against them and and not being a star, it, it really um, humbled me and and really made my drive even stronger because um playing like that and and just being a role player so i think that that really helped me so now um some people have been the star their whole life mm -hmm. and they don't know how to to work around it because they haven't faced any adversity i i feel like i can do that because i've 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 had both sides of the exactly the spectrum yeah you're never surprised exactly that's, uh, that's, oh i'm always working definitely and, now, and that's what uh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. That's that's what it is. Exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. I was just saying. Yeah, exactly. You hit the nail on the head, Malcolm. And and I, I do I do want to ask you if you don't, you don't. Before we kind of go here, just a couple more questions, man. Uh, do you have have you set a commitment date? Do you know when you're going to make a decision, or are you just going to go when it feels right? Uh, so I was supposed to commit um before the season, but I didn't expect Corona. Yeah, nobody um, did. Yeah, you're I would have took a whole bunch of. I would have took a whole bunch of visits and I would have probably known, but it's kind of harder now. So I have, I'm probably just going to go with it. Definitely. Definitely, man. Well, uh, is there, do you have a leader right now, Malcolm? I know we talked about some schools that, that were, were kind of up there for you. Does anyone have a lead or is it just, it, it's still a race to no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, it's just a race. Yeah. I got you, man. Well, uh, you know, as this keeps going on and, and as it gets closer, we'd love to have you back on, um, and, and again, man, I, I enjoy talking to you. You're a great guy. You're going to have a ton of success, Malcolm, in whatever you do, whether it's on the field or off the field in business. And, uh, I just really appreciate you taking the time, man, and, and wish nothing but the best for you in the future and hope we can have you back on. Definitely. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Malcolm, be good, man. We'll be in touch. All right. Sounds good. All right, buddy. See you. That was four-star wide receiver pro prospect Malcolm Johnson. You can see why he has all the offers. Uh, j j a real guy, a mature guy, um, you know, kind of talked about the way he handled his business, kind of talked about who was, who was kind of making some headway. You heard Auburn in there. You heard George in there. You heard LSU in there. You heard Alabama in there. And it doesn't really get much better than that. I, I thought it was very interesting that distance isn't going to be a factor for him. He's not locked in to play in the SEC. You know, he is from Maryland. Um, but, but I know he has connections down in the South. So again, I appreciate you guys joining us. Remember if you need any PR work, anything like that, any marketing, the investor brand network at IBN.com, hit them up. They, they do it for us. They're unbelievable. Also always got to give a shout out to Faison, uh, who, for making the intro. He's our guy that does all the studio work. He's worked with Wiz Khalifa, Kid Cudi. So if you guys need anything, hit him up. It's at Faison Beats. And, uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I got a huge Friday planned. I'm gonna wait. Uh, you know, I kind of put out who's coming on, but but there may be some, there may be some craziness going on. But uh, I appreciate you guys very much, and uh, keep listening. And we're gonna keep doing it. And J Boy is going, going, gone.